So here we are once again. Today's video features a 1969 Maserati Mistral. We actually picked this up along with two other matchboxes. You may recall the Ferrari matchbox we did about a week and a half ago. Got this from the same seller. And you can tell this gem has been customized by someone in the past. I would guess it to be a kid, but I've probably done worse myself, even on this channel. So, who knows? As you can tell, it's a lovely gold with a nice, thick black stripe running down the middle. There is a cross on the roof, and the windows, of course, are tinted black. So I'm not sure if the original artist was a God-fearing individual or somebody with a sick, twisted mind. I'll leave that up to your imagination. Now, this casting was based off the real Maserati Mistral, which was produced from 1963 to 1970. The word Mistral refers to a cool wind that blows towards the coast in the south of France. Now we can see this a little bit off center. So when we started to drill out the post while the base was on, it was going a little bit off center. That's one of the downfalls with drilling the post all the way through with the base on. Sometimes the mushroom part of the, the post is not centered with the actual post itself. So keep that in mind. A lot of people ask that, why don't you just drill all the way first? We do sometimes, especially on newer castings, it's pretty safe that way, but on these old red lines, this was perfectly in the middle and you could see it's off to one side. Now, the way to correct that is again, we could use the file and sand it all the way down because we really don't need all this post anyway. We're gonna have a screw holding it in place. And the reason why we're using the shotgun mic right now and showing you this kind of hands-on is to show you the things that can happen during a restoration or even a custom. Now, once you've got everything drilled, you can go ahead and tap. Or you can use your self-tapping screws. But again, as mentioned in the previous videos, on these older red lines, I would not use the self-tapping screws because these posts are so thin. Also, a, a little tip, if you're having trouble with the tap going in or you're finding that you're breaking tips, you can get some candle wax, dip it in there. So like get the little candle lights, heat them up, dip it in there. It'll make it go a little bit smoother. I've only broken one tap. I've been very fortunate. I used to use the wax method, or you can even use crayons. I've done that as well, but since I've only broke the one, I've just been winging it for the most part. I reviewed some of the footage that I had so far and realized I missed the footage of taking this car apart. This is the interior, which is in pretty good shape. These are the wheels and axles. The axles are in great shape. The wheels, they're discolored obviously, but they're in good shape. We have ordered replacements, we've got them. And then here is the windshield. Ahead of time, I ordered a replacement windshield. And here's the body. Now this is by far the nicest red line that I've restored as far as the body's concerned. You would never have guessed it. Apparently, the kid or whoever painted that must have done it a long time ago because they didn't get a chance to destroy this car. There's really no corrosion at all. Now, they're all gonna have pittings, all red line will. It's just the nature of the car. There's some right here, a little bit right here, a little back here, and some right there. There are some things that happen during these restorations, and here is one of them. Now, when I took the car apart, I noticed that the front was a little loosey-goosey. So I carefully tried to bend it back, but that didn't fare so well, and it snapped off. We're gonna have to fix this. It's nowhere near the hole, so I know I didn't do it. And again, it was already kind of flimsy, but it's right where the axle goes through. So we're gonna have to figure out a way with some JB Weld or some epoxy to fix this because we're not going to order another car. These Maseratis are not that cheap. This one I think was $15, believe it or not. And the easiest way I can think of fixing this is to reattach the base to the body Position this where it needs to go. Go ahead and JB weld it, reposition it, and then just tape it together. I need to see how far this bumper is supposed to stick out though. Here we can tell from the photo, it's actually sticking out the proper amount when I align it to the front of the car. So 
we're going to go ahead and apply the fix or attempt to and uh, go from there. Now we're going to mix up the JB Weld. Next we will tape the base together while we've got it on the body. We'll spread it out a bit so we can apply the JB Weld to the edges. Apply the JB Weld to both sides. Then we reattach it to the body and allow it to dry. Now we're going to clean up the base. We're going to use this heavy duty acid cleaner. Now this is a 50-50 mix. 50% water, 50% acid. And you can see just from moving around a bit, all of the impurities that are coming off that base. And it also removes all the oxidation. Now we need to try to fix some of the pitting on this body. First we clean the body really well. Then we dip it in our acid solution to etch the body. Next we'll put it in our electroplating solution, turn on our power, and let it run for about 40 minutes. And we will have a video this week going over electroplating. Zinc, maybe even copper and nickel. We'll have to see how that goes. This leaves a rough gray finish, so we throw it in the tumbler and let it polish it. Now we're going to polish it with our wheel. And from my experience, zinc plating does not get rid of all the pitting. It does help. We still do a little bit of sanding, and we still don't get rid of all the pitting on this particular casting. Pour some brake fluid and try to clean up this glass. We're going to take our brass wire wheel and clean up the base. We're going to polish it. This will not damage the surface because it's brass. Now here's the shiny base, but there is our repair. Not much I can do about that. At least it works. Here is the body after we polished it, cleaned it with mineral spirits, as well as warm soapy water. I have received comments as well as messages regarding paint procedures. Some of my subscribers have said they can't get the paint to stick. After I polish, I usually rinse it off with water. But the mineral spirits are what really cleans the car. I have this paper towel here. So we polished it, cleaned it with water and a rag. And it felt clean and looked clean, but after we apply the mineral spirits, this is the amount of residue that's left over. As you can see, the car is nowhere near clean, so be sure to prep the body really well before you paint. Now here's a look at the body after we painted it. It looks good. Now you'll notice there are some little black specks here and there. That has nothing to do with the actual paint. That are the pits that we spoke about earlier. Although the body overall was in great condition as far as the plating, there was some pitting, and it shows up quite a bit more on this green. According to the online redline guide, green with a black roof was somewhat rare. Now this was originally green, but I have no idea if it had a black roof. But as you can tell, there's some serious pitting on the roof. Hopefully the black will cover that. We've masked off everything else that is going to stay green, including the A-pillars and the rest of the body. To paint the top, we're going to be using Magic Black. This is available from the Redline shop. This is black vinyl paint. Now this will not dry to a smooth finish. It will have a little bit of texture to it to emulate a vinyl top. And here we are after the painted roof. It definitely did not hide those divots. You can still see them. Clear as day. Now here are our new wheels. We ordered these from the Redline shop. They are the correct size, but we've ran into a slight problem. The wheel set on this Maserati is the Redline cap style wheel. So once I found this out, I went back to the online Redline shop and did some research. Apparently this car was only produced in Hong Kong and only had the bearing style axles. So I'm not sure if the online Redline guy just has it wrong or we've got some rarity here. If you're not familiar with these wheels, here's how they work. As you can see, there is a line right here. Get an X-Acto knife. Put it in the line and push down. Roll it around a little bit and give it a little twist. And there is the hub and there is the wheel cap just as it describes. Unfortunately I don't have any of these cap style wheels. But luckily in my stash I have a set of bearing style axles. So we're going to use those along with the reproduction wheels we have. Now it's time to revisit our glass. It's been soaking in this brake fluid for about 26 hours. Now if this does not work, I've already ordered replacement glass ahead of time. And as you can see, it is coming off, but it's going to take a lot more soaking. But one thing I just noticed, this has a crack in the corner. 
So I'm not going to waste any more time on this. I'm going to use our replacement glass. And now we are finally complete, and you don't know how happy I am to say that. I've never had a restoration give me this much trouble, even my first one. In saying all that, this was still a lot of fun. I got to challenge myself and learn a few things in the process. Now I am still going to order those cap wheels with my next Redline Shop order. This car does take a medium sized wheel, but as you can see, they stick out a bit too far at least for my liking. Now if I were going to sell this or to give it to the little guy, I wouldn't feel comfortable with the base. I'm afraid it could break. It may not, but there's a very little material there and it broke in the first place. This is also a fine example why I don't offer custom work. If somebody sends a car, I end up breaking it, I'm the one that's out. And although it's not perfect, we've came a long way with it. I would still like to know why this particular car has those cap wheels. I will pick some up and install the original axles. I may even attempt to restore these wheels, but for now, the balloon tires are just going to have to do. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, be sure to check out the description located below the video. All pledge levels are eligible for the monthly custom giveaway. I'd like to take this time to thank my top patrons which are Gary Burke, Corbin Toll, and Mark Kidd. Thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it. Also, if you're interested in any of the tools that we use in this video, be sure to check out the Amazon affiliate links located below the video in the description. I have links to all the tools that we use. Also, check out the channel on Instagram. I typically post sneak peek pics of upcoming videos. And as always, thanks for watching.